So I, I'm it. surprised they haven't just sidelined him by now. <laughs> you know? Tim, listen. I got this. You sit this out and just rest. Because you're going to need your strength when you become vice president. So how about you stay, I don't know, in Minneapolis? Uh, or, I don't know, somewhere in Canada? Do you have a place there? Um, but uh, I'll take it from here. I'll take it from here, <laughs> bud. You've done a great here. job. But he, oh, man, because he's embarrassing. Uh, is this where he's, this is a dancing yeah. Tim? Yeah. yeah, this is at the end. So good. Uh-oh. So good. Uh, cut 13. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. He is fun. Dude, calm down. Please. What a, he, he's just a spaz. I, I, I don't... And very effeminate. Oh. <laughs> very, very... Uh-huh. So weird. Very uh-huh. So weird. He's bizarre. And not straight. Mm. Well, he's married to a woman. You keep so. saying that, dude. Yeah. I do? Yeah. I don't think I've said it once. Oh, okay. He's uh, married to a woman. Thank I will you. point that out. Thank you. So, yeah. Uh, he refuses, though, to believe male voters prefer Trump uh, to the Harris Walls ticket. And I'm talking here on this one, uh, especially to the guys. You keep hearing about the scab on there. I refuse to admit that that's real because I know that we care deeply. I know these issues matter to you. I know they matter to all of us. We need to get, especially young men, out there to vote. This is not damn WWE type stuff. It's not about... It's not about, well, it's cool when he talks like this or whatever. It's not cool. It hurts people. Mm. And it leads to violence no. and it undermines our system. That right. is not cool. Right. And again, it's not cool. talk, talk on this. I guarantee you I can shoot better dozens of them. What it's about, oh, what it's really about is killing babies. Right? That's what it's about. Uh, you know, men being cool enough to admit that babies should be killed. That's what it is about for these people. And that And pretending that they're Second Amendment people... Like he did with the the hunting thing. Is that is that what he was kind of addressing there? Was yeah. it everybody's mocking him because of his failed hunting adventure? I guarantee I can shoot pheasants better than them. Oh, jeez. Okay, bro. Whatever. <laughs> I know. Everybody, we all saw the clip. We know better. And according to the people who were there, he never fired the gun. Mm-mm. Not once. He didn't shoot at anything. So I don't know if he even knows where the trigger is. Uh, I bet he he's never handled a gun before in his life. That's what it looked like anyway. Yeah, and I mean, I've been on hunts where I haven't fired either because there just was nothing, nothing coming up, you know. So that 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 could explain that. But I don't know that that explains it in his case. Yeah, I, I just think I he think was he afraid does. he would fall down. If he fired, he didn't want to hurt his shoulder. He said yeah, it. That's right. Why he, that's right. why he changed to that weapon because <laughs> he wanted. He didn't want to hurt his shoulder. That's great. <laughs> he also claimed that Donald Trump will turn the army on his political opponents. Donald Trump over the weekend was talking about using the U.S. Army against people who disagree with him. Just so you're clear about that, that's you. That's what he's talking My about. This is not some mythical thing out there. He called it the enemy mm. within. They keep doing this yeah. with Trump. They keep taking things out of context or, or clear, obvious jokes or exaggerations. I mean, we all know how Donald Trump speaks. Um, but they love to do this with the he's he's said he will be a dictator on day one thing. Mm-hmm. And that's a reference to uh, an interview he did with Sean Hannity. And they take that completely out of context. Yeah, That starts out with Trump saying, I mean, who doesn't want to see strong borders and a strong military and low taxes and low interest rates and go out and buy a house? Hannity says, well, uh, I, I play it on purpose, them talking about him being a dictator, because I see what the media is doing now. I put a montage together. Uh, they want to call you a dictator, and he plays that uh, that montage. Um, and Hannity says, "You use the words, I am your retribution.' And now, before before that, you said you've been wronged, and you'd said other words as well. But I want to be very, very clear on this. To be clear, 
Do you in any way have any plans whatsoever, if re-elected president, to abuse power, to break the law, to use the government to go after people? You mean like they're using right now, Trump says? So in the history of our country, what's happened to us, again, has never happened before. Over nonsense, over nothing. Made up charges. I often say Al Capone was the greatest criminal of all time, if you like criminals. He was a mob <laughs> boss. The likes of which Scarface, they called him. And he got indicted once. I got indicted four times. I wonder what my father and mother would say looking down. Actually, that's not exactly accurate. I think I think Capone was indicted six times. Um, but he says, I love what I do because we're going to have... We're going to make our country greater than ever before. And that's so important. It's so important. We're going to do things. We're going to close the border day one. The border gets closed. And day one and a half, we drill. You know, we drill, baby, drill, 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 drill. And probably on day two, we'll get rid of this ridiculous electric car mandate. (laughs) Uh, So then Hannity jumps in again. Uh, and says, we almost have to go to break. I, I want to I want to go back to this one issue, though, because the media has been focused on this and are attacking you. Under no circumstances, you're promising America tonight you would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. And he says, except for day one. Except for day one, meaning... And Trump says, I want to close the border, and I want to drill. Okay, well, that's not retribution, though. No, no. I'm going to be... I'm going to, you know... He keeps, we love this guy. He's, he's talking of Hannity here. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, no, no. Other than day one, we're closing the border and we're drilling, drilling, drilling. After that, I'm not a dictator, okay? So what he's saying is he's going to mandate that we close the border and we're going to start drilling again. Is that a dictator? I mean, it's asinine. If that qualifies as being asinine. a dictator, then then by that same criteria, then Joe Biden is as well, <laughs> because those are the exact actions he took, 180 degrees different, mm-hmm. on his day one. He yes. closed down uh, Keystone and, and drilling. Right, day one. Day one. And he opened the border and reversed, what was it, 90-something, 100-something uh, of the uh, executive orders that Trump had in place that secured the border. Yes. So, I mean... <laughs> And that's the thing, is can we all agree that the most, um, uh, I I mean, there are a couple back in the 1800s, but at least in our lifetimes, was 2020 not the most disputed election result that we've faced in our lifetimes? And if someone had any way to justify staying in office and saying, nope, I'm ignoring the election results that have been certified and I'm staying in here, it would have been Donald Trump, and yet he left. Mm Mm-hmm. He didn't start a war. He left on January 20th, 2021. And it was painful to see him (laughs) walk out of the White House to the helicopter. Painful. And yet he did it. And so the left is saying he'll be a dictator? Jim Crow 2.0, if this man gets elected. He's been president for four years, and those were pretty damn good years, three and a half, until COVID came along. Mm. And and so stop this. Stop it. I mean, that's all they've got is fear. Right. They're fear mongers, and that is what they have to do. They have to take everything he says out of context, exaggerate it, lie about it, and I'm just sick of it, sick and tired of it. So back to uh, Tampon Tim, he also (laughs) uh, denied abandoning law enforcement as governor during the You uh, yourself have faced some criticism in the past for what some have called your lack of support for law enforcement. Mm. What do you say to people who believe that if you and Vice President Kamala Harris take office, local law enforcement will lose funding and their ability to protect communities? Well, that's false. Vice President Harris funded more than President Trump's proposals did during his budgets. In Minnesota, I had made the largest investment in state history into law enforcement and community safety. I have been there with them every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Mm. (laughs) Oh, this guy, man. And then he blamed Trump for all of Kamala's failures. 
cut 18. We're focused on bringing prices down, focusing on the things middle class families care about, and then focusing on tackling the big issues like Medicare and stay at home care for seniors. Those are really uh, innovative ideas. Yet polls show that many Americans and Pennsylvanians think the economy was better over the Trump administration and Mm -hmm. they liked his tax cuts. They helped everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that he left with 10 million people out of work, 9 million jobs closed, and we were in the middle there was of a pandemic. pandemic. I don't think Stupid. people want to go back to tens of thousands of Americans dying. No, we don't want to go back to the pandemic. No, we don't want to do that. We don't want another pandemic, which is what shut down so many businesses. So, yeah, people were out of work for a while. That wasn't Trump's doing. If Trump was in the laboratory manufacturing COVID-19 like the Chinese did, and then he released it on the American populace, then you could blame him for that. But he wasn't, and he didn't, so you can't.